We are living in a different time. A time in which the world has no place for the priesthood. A time in which the very notion of the priesthood is rejected, as well as the men who attempt to serve Christ in that capacity. This is the context in which we live. We cannot pretend that it is otherwise. We have moved from clarity to confusion, to the public sphere, to the peripheries, and in some sense, scandal-ridden, we have been scattered. And as a result of that, people live in a kind of fear, and the temptation in a moment like that is to huddle and to bunker and to hide. We chose not to do that because the Lord is faithful. He promised to send laborers into his harvest. And so we chose to build in the most unlikely of atmospheres, in the most unlikely of times. And we did what we said we would do. We built and he filled it. We placed these men before him and as assistants to our Lord, we watch him fill their minds with his truth and their hearts with his love and to the point at which just as in the original seminary when 12 men were following jesus he sends them forth you have to have this willingness as a man entering formation to really throw yourself into the process you've got to give yourself completely and totally to the formation process and that requires a great deal of generosity you've got to have this heart that, that's open to everyone. When you take on the priesthood, you have to understand that you're gonna suffer with and for your people, just like Christ did. That you're gonna to have to be able to look beyond their shortcomings, their faults, their failings, and, and love them. People have wounds, and when they open up, it's not pretty, it, it's not for the faint of heart, it's not for the squeamish. The priesthood, in particular the diocesan priesthood, is not a theological laboratory. You, you can't sequester yourself. And so the way in which we help men uh, here at St. Joseph College Seminary is we track with them real life cases. Uh, we talk to them about the types of things that we might hear from people who come to us in need. We look out to the modern world and we see the ways in which people are hurting in the situations in which they find themselves. And we don't want a single one of them to be scandalized in such a way that they will say, I, I can't deal with this. The men are removed from a soundbite culture and immersed in the word himself, in their prayer, in their study, logic, philosophy, art, architecture, all that built up Western civilization born of the Christian faith becomes theirs their inheritance. In the program for priestly formation, there's four different pillars, so to speak, that constitute um, an integral whole of formation. And they are the, the human pillar, the intellectual pillar, the spiritual pillar, and the pastoral pillar. And so all these things kind of work together organically. For each man, it has to be a process of discovery. They have to see something that captivates them, something that, that makes them want to follow, that captures their heart. To become a disciple means to subject oneself to a, a form of discipline so as to be molded, to be formed. That all forms part of this process of discovery. And that, I think, ultimately is what will make men authentic witnesses, that they've discovered something from themselves. If something happens in these men, almost a switch will flip. And instead of discovering that they're the ones that God is pursuing, they'll begin to pursue the Lord. They'll begin to go after Him. That's what I begin to see. My job is almost done because I no longer have to push. I no longer have to really encourage. I just sit back and watch what happens. They'll go wherever he leads. The struggles you go through are for your friends. The struggles you go through are for your spiritual director. But the faithful don't need that. What they need is your joy. They need to see that the one that you love is worth following especially when the world has done everything to eradicate God from the public sphere. What makes for a good and holy priest? Our Lord once asked one of his hearers, why do you call me good? Only God is good. All goodness does come from God. And that all the goodness we see, whether it's in creation, whether it's other people, it is a reflection of he who is good. The only one who is good in himself. It's the very source of goodness. We have to equip our seminarians 
to be able to guide, to strengthen, to enrich families so that they in turn can help society survive a time of great trial. Um, and I think that's central. That's why we do what we do. It's so important that a life of prayer, a life of sacrifice, a life of charity, all of those things have to go hand in hand. And that's certainly been the goal of what we're doing at St. Joseph's. We built and it was empty and God filled it. And a man stands before him in the seminary to be built up by him, to have his intellect filled with his truth, his heart with his love. He builds him up inside and then again he sends him forth. Thank you.